In this week's episode, we're going to be building a New England-style house. So, kind of been a while since I've uh, posted uh, an episode. I think it's been about four weeks. Uh, and during that time, uh, I went on vacation with my family and uh, for a couple of weeks there. And then uh, I was working on a special project uh, that I'll be able to share with you guys at some point. I'm really excited to show you guys uh, what I've been working on. Uh, but that'll be for some future episodes. It'll probably be like a two, three parter. It's a massive project I was working on uh, during that time frame. And I filmed the whole process. So um, that'll be something to look forward to in the future. But today's episode is uh, focused on the New England style house. Uh, and really, this is a prize uh, for uh, the best uh, looking table or best put together table during the summer of plunder. So there were so many fantastic tables. It was really hard to choose uh, just one. Uh, there were so many different style tables, you know, all sorts of different scratch built terrain. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, but I had to pick one. Uh, so I ended up, uh, I decided to go with uh, Jake Ferris's table. And congratulations to Jake. Uh, his table's uh, great. There was all sorts of different uh, scratch built elements to it. Uh, and it was a well put together table and I really, really appreciated it. So I went, uh, he's the big winner of the, of the, well, what I was donating for the summer plunder was the, uh, I was going to build this New England style house. So this is going to be a two-parter. This is the first part. This is really the base and the two uh, chimneys. And I'll show you, uh, well, maybe I should just show you right now. And that's the best way to go about it. Um, so this is the base of it. So, of course, we're going to have to do another floor and the roof. And that'll be in the second episode. I should keep this to two episodes, I think. <laughs> but I did spend a lot of time doing details on the interior. So as this is a, a prize for Jake... I wanted to make sure that uh, I went over the top and, and gave him something really special. Uh, and uh, we got a lot of, uh, you can see I got a fireplace, I got some guns over top of the uh, fireplace. And then on the other side, the other room's got another fireplace. I don't know if I can show it here. Uh, anyways, there's two there's two axes there on the wall. Uh, we got uh, some logs in the fireplace and maybe I'll tilt it that way. You can better off see it that way. And I put a staircase in there. So all sorts of different uh, elements in there I added uh, to the interior because I really want uh, Jake to have a good time playing through this terrain. So he'll be able to he can fit a mini on those staircases, go right up to the second floor, and then we can have a whole match right here <laughs> in this New, Eng New England style house. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we're going to be building in this first episode. We're going to go through this whole how I assembled this base and how I painted it. Uh, and uh, then the second part will go through the, hopefully it'll be the second floor and the roof all contained in that. So it'll be in a couple of weeks. I've been doing the episodes bi-weekly now, I, even though I've been off for <laughs> four weeks. Um, but back to a regular schedule bi-weekly. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, that should give me the next extra time to finish that top up. And then uh, send it off to Jake. I know he's been waiting uh, to get his uh, prize. It's uh, Summer Plunder, I think, ended last week. So uh, yeah, we're sending out uh, all the, uh, I understand most of the prizes have been sent out. All right, so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, let's get down to the table and let's start crafting and let's start painting. Okay, so let's start off with some of the materials we're going to need for this project. We got some dollar store foam board here, a ready-made board that I use from the Dollar Tree. Uh, we got a cereal box. We'll probably need that for the roof, uh, making shingles. Uh, we got uh, the coffee stir sticks. Uh, this is my favorite brand here. I got this uh, from uh, also from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I really like these ones. They're a thinner stick. That's why I like it. And then these are uh, balsa wood that I got from Amazon. I just buy it in bulk. Uh, and we got uh, some insulation foam. These are some bricks that I have left over from another project I was working on. So I, I would have cut them out of the insulation foam, but I already have these made, so I might as well use them up. 
All right, so the first thing I did was kind of measure everything out, uh, kind of the size of the building. Um, I just definitely wanted to make sure it's playable, so I had a hallway. Most houses uh, like this in New England style had a staircase in the hallway leading to the second floor, and they usually had a couple of rooms on the bottom, like a dining room, living room, or kind of a, a kitchen. So I kind of wanted to have a few rooms on the base and a staircase. So as I usually do, I bring out my old Blood and Plunder Mini here and uh, kind of measure everything out uh, to see if it's the right scale. So I went with uh, just a little over two and a half uh, inches tall on the walls. Uh, a little bit shorter than what I usually do. Um, you know, I made it a little bit smaller uh, than my larger houses. Uh, and then I moved to uh, starting to texturize those walls. So I just used uh, peeled the paper off on them. I did peel the paper off both sides and use a tinfoil ball and got that stucco look to everything. And then we're going to move over to uh, cutting some windows out. So I kind of just, uh, I know I wanted to have tall, long windows. That's kind of the style for this uh, this house. A lot of the pictures that I looked at in New England style houses, they had these large windows. So um, usually a lot of windows actually in the front, considering, you know, most houses that I've been building... Uh, the New England style has lots of houses, uh, like, like windows on both sides of the walls, so on the back and the front of the building. Uh, a lot of uh, natural light there. And then, of course, I cut a uh, section out for where the chimney's going to be. Uh, I'm going to use hot glue just so I can glue it faster together, the walls, um, so that it uh, dries faster. Normally I'd use white glue, but sometimes it's hard to uh, get that to stay s straight, so I just hot glue it on. Uh, I'm just measuring with the mini again, the doorway, the windows. Fireplace looks right. It's about the right height. Uh, and uh, everything's uh, looking good. I, I really do spend a lot of time just sizing it up to a miniature. Uh, it seems like it's low there, but once you add the, the sill in, you frame out that window, it's actually not. So you got to account for all that space. So this is uh, one of the dividing walls. Uh, same thing, kind of texturized both sides. Uh, and this is kind of going to be um, the separation of the rooms in the hallway, right? So I want to uh, get those put in. Plus it adds support to the whole structure, right? You're adding two side walls uh, to the whole structure and you're adding uh, uh, more support to it as well. That'll also help us uh, with the second floor. So I'm just showing you how I measured that out. wanted to make the doors on opposite sides and the staircase is going to fit in between there. Uh, and that should give me enough room. I kind of uh, took that in consideration too. Can I stick my hand in there and actually move a mini up and down that hallway? All right, so now I've added glued those two in, and so now we're going to rough uh, in the, well, I've already roughed in the windows, but we're going to actually add the, uh, the balsa wood. Uh, and I'm just going to frame the doors, the windows, the inside, everything. Just frame it all up. Uh, except for the fireplace. We've got another plan for those. I'm probably going to use some bricks in there. Uh, that bottom part of the doorway, that's actually just a coffee stir stick. So I wanted to use a flatter piece on the doorway. Just kind of what a, what a real door would look like. Um, you know, just basically framing it out. And we're just going to do the two interior doors now, uh, with the same, uh, same technique there, just to some, a balsa wood. Now also, uh, I'm going to add some support beams on all the corners. Again, this is something I would do in a lot of my houses. It adds support to the second floor. Um, it just has something for it to sit on. Uh, and it gives overall support to the entire structure. It makes it a lot more sturdy uh, with those posts in there on all the corners. So now the inside's all framed in. All the posts are put in. I uh, kind of wanted to move to uh, uh, figuring out the chimney. So I already cut the hole out what size I wanted the chimney. So all I did was put that foam up against there and then used a pencil and just traced it. Um, traced the opening. So I got the, uh, so the matches, the, the fireplace matches essentially. And we're going we're gonna to dig a hole into that, uh, into the, the foam here. Because we want the chimney to carry through. Uh, and, uh, you know, there should be a cavity in the chimney here. So I usually use my uh, X-Acto blade here. Uh, and I usually cut out the entire frame of it, and then I make usually like stripes or lines in the middle, and then you can just kind of pop it all out. Um, and then that's a 
just kind of like a pen. You could use a push pencil, whatever works for you to, I'm just gonna draw in the bricks instead of gluing them all individually. I'm gonna spend a lot of time just drawing them on. So this is after I pretty well dug out one. I do a little sanding in there and clean that up a bit. But uh, that's pretty much uh, what I do there. I just cut them out and kind of dig it out. And really, uh, to help my uh, myself dig it out, well, like I said, I create those cross lines with the exacto knife, so it's just a bunch of little bits. And I use my little sanding tool here. There's one of these little fine sanders. Uh, and uh, once you've cut it all up and you just kind of pop that in, or you can, you can pop them out, you can see all the little bits to the side there. Uh, they just all popped out. So I also... Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to see this detail, but maybe you'll be able to see a little bit of it. So I want it to look like there's a cavity there where it's going up into the chimney, right? So I, I carve a little bit into that spot uh, just to give the illusion of it going all the way up. And then I already showed you that. <laughs> I'm showing you again that I'm going to trace all this out. Uh, with uh, I, mean, I did both sides, even though a bunch of this is going to be glued to the walls. Uh, it, just in case some of it's exposed in the side, I just I did, I did the whole bricks in uh, for the whole uh, chimney. So this is at an early stage, just showing you uh, what it looks like. Kind of made a bigger ones at the top, where the top of the chimney is. And then I carved out uh, a hole in the top as well, in which I'm just going to paint black, so it looks like there's an opening at the top of the chimney as well. So we're just kind of really carving this up, to, uh, give ourselves a nice little chimney here. Uh, in New England style houses I looked at, a lot of them have red bricks and, and uh, they're already into that kind of construction brick uh, going into their structures and not so much uh, the rustic ones I was doing in the past. So you can see I let a little bit smooth. That's just going to, I'm going to put glue on there and it's going to help glue it to the side of the house. Just have a flat surface there where I didn't carve it. All right, so then we got our coffee stir sticks here. Uh, we're going to make uh, wooden planks on the floor. And uh, I want to do the trimming. So usually I do like the molding on the around the bottom of the floors first. Initially I was going to do popsicle sticks, but I changed my mind. I decided to go completely with coffee stir sticks. The coffee stir stick actually is the proper scale for wooden planks. I sometimes just use popsicle sticks because I can cover more area faster. Um, but uh, the, actually the coffee stir stick is, a, is the right proper scale and size for a wooden plank. So you can see I did the hallway already, and now I've added some details to the top of the windows. And Well, I did the doorway. I will be doing the windows here shortly. Uh, and that's an egg carton stone. So uh, I use paper egg cartons, and I didn't show you that in the supply list, but uh, I do end up using egg carton, uh, just cutting up. Uh, I have leftovers left from other projects, but um, uh, you can just get paper egg cartons and cut them out, and they make great stones. Again, more adding more details over top. The mantles on the fireplaces now. And you can see I've got all the wooden planks on the floor. And I made these details for above the uh, fireplaces. So these are some bits I have left over from my miniatures. I think the militia box set uh, and the sailor uh, sprues. And I just kind of, uh, you know, they, they would have guns over top of the fireplace and stuff like that. Just adds a little more detail to the interior. So now we're going to uh, work the inside of the windows. So this is a smaller balsa wood. When you get that bulk balsa wood from uh, Amazon, it has three different sizes, uh, which is great. Uh, great for doing windows and, and doorways and stuff like that. So um, really good. Uh, recommend uh, checking that out. It's, uh, that's where I get most of my balsa wood now. I used to get it from Michaels, but they don't carry it anymore. Um, so you can see that we've pretty well uh, done all the details now. We've got all the, all over the windows. Uh, we've got all the wooden planks. We've got the fireplace all looking pretty good. Uh, but now we have to get the stones on the side of the fireplace. So that's why I didn't um, put the boards in like I did the doorways. I wanted to have a more stone look uh, around the fireplace. So that's why I left it to open like that. So we're just going to get some white glue, uh, and then I got all those leftover stones. Uh, if you need to cut them out, I, I just cut them out of insulation foam, and I've done that in several of my construction videos. I made a, I decided to make a red brick, kind of, it's going to match the fireplace uh, or the chimneys on the front entranceway. And then I'm going to do this uh, kind of brick detail on the edges, kind of like a support and then I'm going to move to, which I've never done before, uh, egg carton 
kind of walls. I think it gives me that nice stone look that I'm looking for for a New England style house. Now, they, there's houses with wooden planks and stone houses and even like a stucco kind of look. There's several different variations of New England style houses, but they all have that lots of windows out front, the same general door in the center uh, look to it. So I really like the way egg carton and stones are texturized, right? They already have texture to them. So it's uh, fantastic. So, yeah, I had to spend some time cutting and trimming them and making them fit in there. But I think it's going to pay dividends in the uh, overall design. So you can see you got the chimneys all ready to go. Uh, and I'm going to glue those on there now before we continue on too far. Um, so now it's all completed on there. You can see we've already worked on getting all the other sides. I had to uh, put the chimneys on there because I wanted to work the egg carton stones around it, right? I usually use egg carton stones for, for cobble roads and stuff like that. So I have used this before, but I always wanted to do it on a wall. I think it would be a really good castle wall too. Uh, so this is our beginning of our stairwell. This is a really simple design. Just make uh, measure out the space you have. Now you left a little gap at the top because the next stair will actually be on the floor up. And make sure you consider the the height of, because I'm going to put some wooden um, coffee stir sticks on top of each step. So it looks like there's wooden steps on there. So take that in consideration. Plus, uh, is there room for your minis going beside the staircase? So it fits on the staircase and there's room in the hallway. So like I said, you want to be able to play in this hallway. Like I see action right on the staircase and have uh, fighting right in this hallway here. So I'm just mentioning that I'm, I just pointed at the, the uh, coffee stir sticks I plan on putting on there. So this is a little uh, cradle I'm going to build for the logs in the fireplace. A lot of uh, fireplaces have a little, some kind of cradle in there to uh, put your logs on, to hold your logs in. So I, I just use some uh, skinny balsa wood here. Uh, and I use my old willow fencing that I'm still using uh, to make some pre-texturalized logs for the fireplace. So I'm kind of leaving them separate for now. Uh, and I thing I forgot to mention, and I can see I've done it already, paint the inside of the fireplace black before gluing it on because you can't really get to it once you've done that. I've made this error so many times, I forget to do that. Uh, paint the inside so you can actually get at it. So if you don't get it all, it's still black and you can see the details on here. So now you can see i got all my different components uh, we're going to paint them all black separately and we're not going to glue them in yet because it's going to be a lot easier to paint those pieces separately uh, and then when we're completed painting we'll, we'll glue them in so we've got all our pieces here that's after i've added the black craft paint uh, full cart um, to this entire piece so i'm just showing you all the different sides and we're going to move to uh, the real brown. So we're going to start moving into the colors I normally use to do undertones. And I'm even going to use it on those smaller pieces too. We're just going to use real brown on everything. Slap it on all the colors. So you can see after I've added it on there, I've left a little bit of the black showing. But uh, mostly covered most of it with that brown. This gives me a really good dark base to start on, right? To add, start adding colors to. And I paint the bottom. I like to paint the bottom of it. I think it actually adds more strength when you add more craft paint to the entire piece, right? So then we're going to move to bark brown. This is our highlighting brown. And we're just going to hit everything else with that. Uh, we're going to use a lot less of that just to touch up areas and highlight things. I really like to stick with the earth tones and uh, we're really starting to highlight uh, certain aspects of the piece. Uh, and we're just building up those layers, right? Uh, and so everything uh, that we put on there is adding to the overall finished piece. We're adding those deep colors to it, and then we're going to add more and more colors on top. Now, I was really debating on which way to go with the uh, New England-style house. A lot of the colors are just a lot of plain grays and whites. Um, some of them have uh, colored uh, shutters on the windows, and I didn't add shutters to this. Um, so... It's going to be in the framing, and I really kind of went back and forth on this. But I really knew that I wanted the edging and the, uh, the chimneys to be a red stone. 
A lot of them were red stones on those uh, little pictures of the ones I looked at. So I want to definitely capture that. So this is after I've added the Pablo. Again, another one of those undertones I just showed you there. I didn't mention it, but I showed you. Uh, but yeah, that's the color I was using. It's another full car paint. And again, another one that I use on my uh, undertones. Now you can see I added a lot more to the chimney because it's going to be the base of my red colors that I'm adding. And same with the staircase. I'm going to use that same red brick construction brick look to the staircase going to the second floor. So that's our camel. And I'm going to touch some of the wood with that, uh, lighten up uh, some of the wood, and of course all the stones on the outside. Not necessarily the stones on the corner because I want them to be red stones, but the stones around the fireplace and those uh, the uh, egg uh, carton ones that I made. So you can see I've added uh, the camel to that. And I've got kind of a weathering happening on the doorway entranceway. Uh, and I've got kind of the inside of the fireplace. So that's what I hit with that camel. And I did a little bit on the logs. We're going to add some speed paints over top of that so I lightened it up a little bit. So this is back to the real brown again. And uh, this is yellow ochre. I usually mix the two together, get a darker yellow. And I start with lightening the floors with that. Um, and then I add yellow ochre on its own over top. So you're just kind of brightening it up. And I'm going to hit it with a few more speed paints here in a minute too. So we got desert yellow, skeleton bone, necrotic flesh, uh, and uh, mummy robe. But we also have a hardened leather. I, actually, I screwed up my lineup there a little bit. <laughs> I kind of mixed myself up. Um, but I, I'm actually going to add a little bit of that uh, speed paint in here too. And I decided to, at first, go with a blue color for my window. So I used this ultramarine uh, blue here, this High Lord blue, which is speed paint, necrotic, uh, sorry, that's the necromancer cloak, uh, grave uh, land gray, and this camo cloak. These are all so lots of speed paints now. I've been using a lot of speed paints to paint my houses and do weathering and stuff like that. I really like the speed paints. So this is Zelot yellow and sand golem. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of that to the flooring, and I mentioned adding speed paints to brighten them up. Those are kind of a yellow color. Then we got our dragon red, and we got a this fire gauntlet orange, and this is that turbo dark color I got from Adepticon. It's kind of a red orange. And we're going to paint some different color bricks. I also do a couple of mummy roll bricks in there too. I can see I've already painted them. I've added them in there. Just to add some uh, varieties, they have a lot of multicolored bricks, but they're all kind of red. You can see I've added those in there. And then I covered it with uh, the speed paint, uh, Fire Giant Orange, and that kind of gave my uh, chimneys their look. So I decided to cover over that blue with uh, Necromancer Cloak and Graveyard Gray because I didn't really like that blue. And I used the mummy robe because I had an idea of doing the white mortar between the bricks, which a lot of New England style houses have. Um... But again, over time, as I you'll see as I evolved through this, I kind of changed my mind. I didn't like the way it looked. Uh, you can see I've added uh, some graver gray to actually some of the stones, uh, and I've kind of altered it a little bit. So then I went to uh, the sand golem. This is hardened leather and grim black. Uh, we got some uh, skeleton horde, an Agrax air shader, and the one I can never say. Uh, Serpian and Cypria. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, and then I kind of add that all over the, uh, in strategic places throughout the entire piece. Um, adding some of those, uh, colors and washes and making it darker around the fireplace so it looks like the smoke, there's smoke damage on the walls. Uh, just kind of added a lot of that to everything. Uh, just so it looks where it's, uh, well used. All right, so that's pretty much done for the bottom. Let's take a look at the uh, small battle map. Got some French-Canadian militia here, and uh, we got some English settlers uh, defending the uh, New England-style house here. So there's some uh, miniatures here, actually, from the expansion Fire in the Frontier for Blood and Plunder. Uh, and some of them are just... Uh, oh, they're all a range of miniatures from Blood and Plunder. Um, I really like the Fire on the Frontier expansion, and... Uh, this house will come in handy for that. 
Uh, I don't know if Jake plays that, but, uh, you know, maybe he'll get into it with uh, this uh, New England-style house. But you could use it for anything in the North American theater. Come in handy for all sorts of different uh, matches in Blood and Plunder. So that's pretty much it for the bottom half. You can just see all the details we've added in there. I'm uh, really looking forward to adding the second floor and completing this project and have it all put together and send it off to Jake. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in part two.